Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Welcome to another edition of Sunday Sessions. Wait for my phone to load up, wait for some more people to get in and then we're gonna make some cocktails today. Let me just get my phone ready to go. Alrighty, we're live. Good to see everyone already. So today what we're gonna be doing is looking at the uh, the Federation Gin. So we'll wait for some couple more people to get in. And then yeah, today, today's one I'm really excited for. I've got to work on a couple of the batches of this. So we're gonna make some classic cocktails, some G&Ts, Nice and last week we were going a bit experimental for the Easter edition. This week we're going back to the basics and keeping it nice and simple. So I think, yeah, good to see people in already. Good to see Sona, good to see Dieter, good to see Joseph, good to see Mark, good to see people already. So yeah, nice and uh, nice and relaxed today. We're going to be talking about our Federation Gin, which is the official gin of Parliament House. So it's a really cool little concept. And today we've got both our labels. We've got our distillery release, which is what the retail edition is. And then we've got the actual edition we use for Parliament. And I've been asked questions about where did this gin come from? Why is it the official gin of Parliament House? And what, yeah, what exactly, how did that become? And basically Parliament House approached us about five years ago and said, can you make an Australian gin? And that's what we really wanted to do. So what we did is we went out and got one botanical from every state and territory. So I've got to put this in the middle. So yeah, one botanical from every state and territory. What we do is we separately distill that. So each of those individual botanicals, we put through the spirit, we put through the still, and that's a, a run. Compared to our classic dry gin where we distill everything together. So this one's really cool. You've got your Kakadu Plum from the Northern Territory, your Lemon Myrtle, your Cinnamon Myrtle from Victoria, which I think for being a Melbourneian, I quite like that one. It's a really nuanced flavour as well, the Cinnamon Myrtle. Then you've got your Strawberry Gum from New South Wales, which adds a beautiful little, sort of binds it all together because you get those beautiful strawberry notes, but then it also tones down the Lemon Myrtle and the Cinnamon Myrtle. You've got your Mountain Pepper Leaf from South Australia, your Cinnamon Myrtle, your Bottle Seed, your Kwandong from out west, and I really like the uh, Celery Top Pine from Tasmania. That one's a really cool one because Celery Top Pine actually tastes like juniper when you distill it. So this one probably is the least junipery of all our gins, but then because we do add that Celery Top Pine as you do get a little kick, but it's quite, I actually, I'm gonna get to one of our questions straight up because this sort of links into where I'm going. So Stephanie asked, is this a great gin to sort of approach as a beginner if you're not really into your gins? And I'd say yes. Because of all those botanicals, you're not getting that big juniper hit. So where the classic and the navy are your big juniper forward gins, this one's a bit more nuanced. And I think because you've got all those local botanicals in there, it creates a really tasty, enjoyable gin. So I think this is a great starter gin for people. It's a little bit boozier at 42.5%, but I don't think that really matters is when you're mixing it into drinks. So I really think this is a great gin to start off with. Before I keep talking too much, we're gonna start making some drinks. Today, first up, we're gonna make a and t a med and fed, a fed and med, one of my, it's probably actually my personal favourite of our G&Ts. So basically nice and simple. You're going to get your glass, get some ice. So yeah, I'll make this drink, then we'll get some questions. Feel free to ask anything along the way as always. And yeah, basically, nice and simple. Alrighty. One second, I've uh, forgotten my jigger, but no need to worry, I've got one right here. That's preparation. So basically, I'm only gonna do a half pour today for this because we're making three drinks and I don't wanna to have to drink too many full-size drinks. So yeah, 15 mil of your McHenry Federation gin. Oh, it's just beautiful. You get the myrtles up first, but then when it's like, once it opens up, once you put the tonic in there, you get those Kwandong, your Kakadu Plum. It's a really unique little gin. Today we're using the Mediterranean tonic from Fever Tree. Ooh, it's a bit more stubborn today. And basically, just pour it in. I love how these flavors work together. The Mediterranean is a bit of a sweeter gin, uh, sweeter tonic, sorry. And you get those beautiful flavors. And I think this one really works well together. For this one, rosemary as its garnish. A little bit of a smaller drink, but that's because I've made it to a half measure. So I'm gonna have a bit of a taste, have a bit of a, some tasting notes, and then we're gonna get into some of the two other classic drinks we're doing today. And I'll get to some comments too. Uh, it's just so refreshing. That's, oh. I, th I think that was probably one of the first McHenry G&Ts I've ever had, so it just uh, takes me back now, but it's lovely. It's really, really, it's just clean. Because all those natural botanicals, native botanicals are so fresh and floral and vibrant, and you add the Mediterranean tonic, it's just a bustling, bright gin. It's sort of, oh, I love it. It's beautiful. I'm going to have another sip before I, yeah, as you can see, I just really like this one. What I like though, is even though it's quite a fresh gin, you can still have it in winter. And that's why I've got some more wintery kind of cocktails. So we're gonna showcase how it can be used all year round. 
Alrighty, let's get to some comments. Good to see so many people in already. Good to see Beck at least, we'll get to your question after. Good to see Jared, the gin cart. Good to see Tim. Hey Tim, how are you? Good to see Fever Trish. Good to see you Trish, hope you're well. Good to see Nick. Good to see Jenny, Tom. Good to see everyone today. Got lots of people in. Good to see Martinez from Columbia again. Hope you're well, mate. Any botanicals from Canberra? Yes, there is from the ACT. So from the ACT, we've got Mountain Pepper Leaf. Actually, I said before Mountain Pepper Leaf from South Australia. No, it's not. That's from the uh, the ACT. So yeah, we keep it. We've got one from every state and territory. So it's a really, it's a quintessentially Australian gin. One from every state and territory. Blend those all together. And yeah, it's a, it's once the official gin of Parliament House. The green label looks cool. Yeah, so this is the official label of Parliament House. So basically what this is, I'm going to put this in front of the screen, is this is the original invite to Federation back in 1901. So for all the history and political people out there, when Australia was federated, when all the states came aligned, the original invitation looked like this. So back in, it was in Melbourne, the original Parliament House at the Exhibition Building, and it was this label. Where we've got the big Federation across was the actual invite. So we've been really lucky that we're allowed to use this image on there, and it's been a really cool collaboration with Parliament House. And yeah, it's, it's sort of, we just got approached by them. So it's a really cool thing we do. We do the honey vodka for them, which we touched on last week. And then we do our classic gin and our summer gin. So we're going to do those. I think we might have a whole Parliament House edition one day and sort of make some parliamentarian cocktails. Use my politics degree for good. So yeah, I really like this. Probably it's a stunning label. So you can buy this for the gift shop. And that sort of links me to another question we had from Oz Botanicals was, what do the parliamentarians actually use it for? We, we, we say as a joke is that they just drink it, but the reality is it's used in the restaurants, the gift shop, and for diplomatic reasons. So it could be used for gifting. So yeah, we have lots of politicians who really like our gin. So we get Christmas cards and that's really cool. So if you ever head down to the cellar door, you see we've got our little parliament house shelf and you get some, uh, some Christmas cards from all the politicians. So yeah. All right, we've got some questions coming through. Trevor Tree says delicious. Yeah, it's, it's I, well, I love the Mediterranean tonic. I think I was watching your live stream the other day and you said that's the tonic that really got you into drinking tonics and I think I have to agree it's it's super approachable I think that's what I sort of give people when they're first starting to drink GNTs because it's so clean I just love it actually yeah I really do um Stephanie says can you put cucumber if you're not a fan of rosemary absolutely I just like rosemary because I've got a rosemary bush in my backyard so I'm sort of keeping to what I've got in the house and that's why people probably think oh he's using the same garnishes but I've got lots of dry fruits so I'm just thinking what do you have in your house and experiment like try different things put whatever you like in there just Explore how you like to garnish your gins. Personally, I don't I don't like a lot of garnishes in my gin. I just like to drink my gin. But they look pretty and they do enhance the flavours. Like with the rosemary, you get those beautiful aromatics coming up. Alrighty. Like the, Sona says she likes the label too. Yeah, good to see Jops. Secret Garden Gin. Jackie. Chloe from Hellfire. Beckett List. Yeah, it sounds... Oz Botanical said it sounds delicious. Yeah, this is a, it's a personal favourite. And I was really lucky. My first time I actually went down to the distillery for work. I actually got to do... A couple of distillation runs. So I got to do the cinnamon myrtle, the kakadu plum, and I got to do the celery top pine. And it was amazing to see what those spirits are individually. So basically they're just distillates. So it's just flavoured spirit. Then we blend it all together and then we put the juniper in and that's where you get the gin from. So this was really cool. And I think you, I love that when we are doing the distillation runs, you're getting the gins at those high proofs. So 70, 80% and you're getting all those flavours. I would love to do a version of this that sits at 75 percent alcohol but it's probably not the most sensible decision but it's a beautiful way to actually explore high proof spirits and see how tasty and not burny they can be so not the best english but yeah they don't actually burn that much because you've got those beautiful aromatics coming through all right you've got lots of uh, lots of uh, comments today love rosemary and grapefruit yeah grapefruit would work really well in this it's a really if i had some i'd definitely put that in what do you think is the ideal temperature of tonic martinez asks oh this is a good one i might have to get trish to help me out on this one I like it out of the fridge, but at the same time, if you're adding ice in there, you can just put your tonic in. But I like to chill mine beforehand. A lot of the bars I go to, if you go to Gin Palace, they always have theirs in the fridge. So I think, yeah, try to chill your tonic when you're mixing it. But when you do chill a spirit, you're going to lose some of those flavours just a little bit. But that's just, it doesn't really matter. Once they, the water then opens it up, so you're sort of not losing a lot. So I'm going to have a bit more of a sip, and then I'm going to get on to our second cocktail. Yum. All right, I'm going to put my phone to the side. So today, we're gonna to make a bit of a spin on a Negroni. I don't have any Campari at home, and personally, I prefer Aperol to Campari. So we're gonna make a Contessa, which means Count. And the old story was the Count Negroni went into a bar and ordered that. But once we get to Navy Street and Foyk, we're gonna cover the actual history of the Negroni. So we're gonna make some boozy cocktails, and I think 
that's going to be in two weeks' time. So I think next week we're going to do the butterfly gin, then we're going to do the, uh, the navy strength, then we're going to have vodka week. So vodka's going to be really cool to sort of make some interesting little cocktails. But yeah, before I ramble too much, let's go into our next drink. I'm just going to make this straight in the glass today. Normally you can make it in like a mixing glass and pour it in, but today we're going to keep it nice and simple for everyone. We're just going to make it in the glass. Normally you have like a nice big rock of ice, but I've just got the ones out of the freezer. It doesn't really matter that much. So yeah, this one, really simple. Aperol or Campari, or today's Aperol, a vermouth and gin, one part each. So 30, 30, 30, nice and simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with our gin. Let's get a jigger. So yeah, 30 mils, one ounce. And I think this, the reason I'm using this one today, is I think the Federation has those beautiful aromatics coming through. It's going to work really well with the vermouth and the Aperol. So today we're using Maidenite. Nice local little vermouth. I love vermouth. Vermouth and aromatized wine. This is just a classic. You can use a dry vermouth, you can use a sweet vermouth, but this is what I've got at home and support local as well. Brand new bottle and keep your vermouth in the fridge once you've finished it too. Just keeps it a bit fresher. Oh, that's lovely. See, last week we used Lale. It's a bit different. This one's got more of those foresty, earthy botanicals. Put that back. And then 30 ml Aperol. So this is very simple. This is a lighter version of a Negroni. Because the Aperol isn't as bitter, you are gonna get a lot less of those big nuts coming through. But personally, I think I'm biased. I just really love Aperol, so I want to use it again today. And then just stir it away. Because you're not using a big rocks, it's gonna be a bit more clunky, but that's not really to matter. And then, nice little bit of orange in there. And that's a Contessa, a nice little spin on a Negroni using Campari, um, using Aperol, sorry. That's gonna be a new favorite of mine, I think. That's beautiful. I love what Maiden and I are doing. They're really cool. I went to a really cool tasting last year at Gin Palace where they used Tiny Bear Distillery and they did a whole Negroni it was a Negroni degustation venue. So it was Negronis paired with the Tiny Bear Distillery and then with food and it was great. Izzy did a great job and yeah, I, that's where I sort of actually started to love Negronis from there on and I think we had a chocolate one, but this one is great. Just a nice little spin on it. The Aperol really makes it a bit more vibrant. Putting the orange in there too gives it a bit more of those citrusy flavors. And I love the vermouth. You get like a creaminess coming through as well. Yeah, that's really cool. All right, we'll get to our... Uh, some more comments. Good to see some people in. Got lots of people in today, this is really cool. Got Sam, good to see Sam. Sam asks, better be an espresso on the list at some point. Yes, Sam. Sam's one of my friends. Um, We are gonna do, oh, yeah, I think vodka week. We're gonna do, we might have to make two espresso martinis then. I think we might have to, might have to send you some, some samples and get your opinion, but we might do one with the honey vodka and one with the normal vodka and see how they compare. Good to see the Rennie Distilling, another great friends of ours down in Tassie. Slow Gin, yes, Slow Gin. You're one of our big fans of Slow Gin Silver Mosh. It's a great little gym. So yeah, we'll, I think we'll touch on some Slow Gin again. We'll do another Slow Gin episode. Sandra says, Contessa equals Countess. Yes, good point. You've corrected me in my Italian there. Good to see Gin Days, Whiskey Reviews. AL T-shirts for sale. I doubt the distillery they are, but we are working on putting them on the website. So that's, I'm working on that. So next couple of weeks, we should have some T-shirts available. Good to see you, Grant and Grappa. Good to see you, mate. Yes, on Wednesday night, we're doing a collab with Applewood Distillery. So I'm very excited for that. So that's going to be a really cool little discussion about South Australian and Tasmanian gins. And it's probably just going to be a nice little laugh. I'm really excited for that. It's going to be a good episode. I can see my bottle of Aperol disappearing. Yes, definitely. I think Aperol's a great drink. Whether you're having a spritz, whether you're having these kind of cocktails, it's really versatile. And I think you can... Especially in this time where you can't go out and buy lots of different fancy ingredients, Aperol is great to just use in anything. All right, we're gonna get on to our third little cocktail today, which is a gimlet. So I thought, with having such bright and native Australian botanicals in here, I thought, let's, let's sort of use a gimlet. And that's got the lime juice, got the sugar syrup. Basically, it was an old medicine. It's to cure scurvy. And I'm, I'm all about curing scurvy, even though it's not really a thing today. But I really love those old historical cocktails when the British Navy would use your gin, your rums, 
And yeah, Blake, basically make other mojitos or gimlets. So yeah, this one's really basic. You're using sugar syrup, you're using lime and gin. Put that in your shaker and put it all together. So yeah, what we've done is we've chilled our cocktail glass. So just chuck that in the fridge or the freezer. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our shaker and we're gonna build this up. Alrighty, so. Ice. Then what this calls for is 30 mil of lime juice. So I just pre-prepared this. Fresh loose lime juice, you can actually use lime cordial. When I was doing my research for this, I thought, actually there was a bit of debate about whether to use lime juice or lime cordial, but I had lime juice at home, so that's what I'm gonna use. So chuck that into your shaker. Then we're gonna do 20, the recipe calls for 22.5 mil of sugar syrup. Just put in 20 mil. I think that's probably the easiest way to do it. So you sort of just measure that out. Once again, just using my own homemade sugar syrup, just put it in your empty bottles. It's a great way to recycle. And sugar syrup, I'd choose a one-to-one -one recipe. And then what this calls for is 60 mil of gin. So two shots. Ooh. I think I might have to get some pourers for next week as I at least said a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, basically put that in there. I'm gonna put a little bit more ice in there just to get it. And then you shake it. Make sure it's all sealed so it doesn't come out. And yeah, just shake away. Get your glass ready. And what you wanna do is just get your uh, cocktail shaker nice and frosty and that's when you sort of know it's ready. I'm gonna double strain this one today just because I don't have the best strainer on this one. And yeah, this is a gimlet. I think I'm really gonna enjoy this one because you're using stuff I, I really like. I love lime juice. I love sugary drinks, most people know. And this one just calls for a lime wheel, which is great because I love lime wheels and I have lots of them at home. So yeah, basically what you wanna do is just float that on top. And that's a gimlet. So yeah, I'm gonna have a bit of a taste, take some of your questions. I can see a few coming in. But yeah, happy Sunday everyone. Hope everyone's staying at home. Feel free to ask some questions and I think I'm gonna enjoy this one. Oh, that is cool. That's super fresh. It's got those mojito vibes and I can really understand why they used it as a cure to scurvy back in the day. It's super fresh, super, oh, that's, a, it's a bit chilly in Melbourne today, but this actually really works. I really love this. I think the gin actually suits it so well because you get those lemon myrtles, your cinnamon myrtle, and lemon myrtles are real punchy botanical. But what I like is you get those nice nuanced Kwandong and the Kakadu plum coming through. You do lose the celery top pine, but this is super cool. And you look really classy drinking it too. That's a winner. That's two shaking cocktails in two weeks that I've nailed, so I'm pretty impressed with myself. I'm gonna have to, gonna have to back that performance up next week. I'm gonna get some questions, and I've got a couple more questions too. Alrighty. Where is the honey vodka from? So the honey vodka's ours, so I'll get this one here. So it's from, it's our collaboration with Parliament House. So the, the honey actually comes from the beehives within the grounds of Parliament. They send it to us, we distill it all together with our, our normal vodka. So we just did get that all in the still. And it comes out of the honey vodka. A really cool little taste. I really love this. We used it last week to make uh, a white Russian, but we're gonna make some espresso martinis, stuff like that. So I really like the honey vodka. It's a great little gin. Normally we have it just an exclusive for Parliament House, but at the moment it is available. So give us a buzz, send us an email, and we can get that to you as well. Let's put that one back. Let me get some other some other comments and questions. Oz Botanical says, now you're talking, love a gimlet. Yeah, I really like it. It's a super cool drink, super refreshing. You almost could even put this like in a rocks glass and just sip on it, but I really love it. Martin has asked, what food or nuts do you think can be a good pairing? Great question. Um, roast duck and Negronis goes really well. With the gimlet, you could almost treat that like a bit of a white wine. So you could have like a nice seafood dish or some pasta. Like a, I love pasta, I love seafood, I love food in general. But I think, yeah, you sort of treat this one like a white wine. Use this as an aperitif, but you can also have a bit more heavy foods like your ducks, your porks, sort of your roasts. G&T, start, always start with a G&T, I reckon, and finish with a martini, just because it's got big and boozy. So. I think at the end of the day, though, you find what you want to like with food. So try, experiment, mix and match. And I think, yeah, just sort of, because each person's palate's very different. So you don't want to sort of, I don't want to tell people this is what you should pair with it, but just give a bit of an idea. 
Wish Girl Collection, she says she's liking it. Yeah, thank you. Stephanie says, sounds and looks amazing. Yum. These are all really cool. So we, oh, last week I had a bit more fun with them and on Whiskey Wednesdays we had a bit of fun mixing Coke and some dry. But we thought, let's get back to the classics today. So, yeah. <laughs> Sona, pass the gimlet through the phone, please. Definitely. Once this is all over, we're definitely going to have to go see Yao and have some of these. So, yeah, hope you're well. And, uh, yeah, definitely once these are over, we'll have a couple. Alrighty, got a couple more questions. I'm just going to grab my sheet. So, one from Simon. He said, once a bottle of gin is open, how long will it last or does it start to oxidise? So, good, a bit of an example here. Here, at the moment, it's fine. Once you open a bottle, it will start to oxidise. Unlike whiskey though, it won't oxidise as quickly. Once this gets down to about halfway, I'll probably decant it into a smaller bottle, just so there's a lot less oxygen in there. So, yeah, I think that'll, uh, that's probably the easiest way to do that, is, I'm just gonna blow my nose quickly, sorry. Mm, hay fever, everyone's mowing today, and it's really getting to me, sorry. So, oxidisation. In whiskey, it occurs really rapidly because it's a more volatile spirit with all the tannins in there. With this one though, yeah, once it gets down to the halfway point, put it into a smaller bottle, but gin has an indefinite life span. Spirits in general do. Your vermouths are a lot less like that. Put that into the fridge, your Aperol's gonna be the same, you wanna drink those relatively quickly, but basically if I left this like this, it should be fine for about a year or two. If it gets any lower though, I wanna sort of decant it into a smaller bottle and keep it. But really, it's not gonna affect the taste that much. Some gins will, like your, your slow gins, your butterfly gins, they'll change a lot because there's a lot less, because there's stuff post-distillation in there. When you've got your, just your clean, just your original ones, they're not gonna do as much. Alrighty, I think that's uh, indefinite life, you say. Yeah, in theory, you sort of can keep them. That's why you find, like I think down in Antarctica, they found some of Shackleton's old whiskey and they sort of re, they recreated it, but the whiskey itself was said to be okay still, so you can definitely keep it. Um, Oz Botanicals asked, what did the part, yeah, so Oz Botanicals said, what did they do with the gin? Well, we think they, we don't think they drink it a lot. And the last question is from Jessica. How did we choose each botanical for this gin? Basically, we went out and got lots of different botanicals from all over Australia. And then what we did is we ch had different recipes using different ones from each state and territory. And this was the recipe we thought worked the best. So you can get a lot of these other botanicals from other states, but we thought these botanicals represented what each state was. So that's why we sort of did that. And yeah, this is the recipe we've come up now. It's five years old and we think it's a really cool gin. A great gin for seasoned drinkers and new gin drinkers. So yeah, it's a, I really love this one. I'm gonna have it one more sip, ask any more questions and I'm gonna head off for this afternoon and yeah, have a good one. So yeah, our, fed, our Mediterranean sometimes I call it, just your Med and Fed. Really clean. Ah, oh, I love that gin, that's so good. Now we'll get to our Contessa. Yeah, spin it on the granny with Aperol. That vermouth is awesome. I'm really excited to make some martinis with that. They always impress me, mate. No, it's a great gin. Um, great vermouth. But any vermouth is going to work in this stage. I thought, let's just get some really cool stuff on there. Oh, this is awesome. It's just so limey and fresh. You almost want to be on a, a beach just drinking that. Oh, yeah, it's got those real mojito vibes. And as you can see, I'm really enjoying this one. Good to see Aaron. Good to see Daniel. Hope you're well, guys. Good to see Clinton. Yes, good to see everyone. Favorite Trish. Yeah, always love the Mediterranean. Good, yeah, Aaron's in. Good to see everyone. Jackie says hello too. I think that's going to wrap me up for this afternoon. Nice and nice and easy session today. Sort of just keep it nice and simple. We've got a busy week coming up on the live streams, actually. On Tuesday night, we've got, actually, I'm being interviewed by the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. So talking all things McHenry and how I got into this career. So yeah, that's going to be really exciting. So head over to the uh, SMWS Facebook page or Instagram. Wednesday night, we're doing our live collab with Applewood, so that'll be on Applewood Distillery and us. That's gonna be really cool. And we're gonna push Whiskey Wednesdays to Thirsty Thursdays this week. And I think we're gonna do another mixing episode. So we had some, we actually had a really great response to that. So I think we're gonna have to do some collabs on that. So we're gonna have to get some weird stuff and mix those with our whiskeys and other whiskeys and sort of just see, break down that, the myth of not being able to mix single malt whiskey. So that's our plan for this week. We hope to see you at all our events and uh, stay safe for everyone, stay at home and try and make these lovely cocktails at home. I'm gonna go take this one and finish that. Have a good one, guys. See ya.